Hello everybody, this year TriHackMe again created their own advent calendar for this year's holiday season. It is once again aimed at beginners, but I guess everyone can learn a few things from it here and there. So without further ado, my name is Avokari, and it's time to get festive and crack open the 12th window of the TriHackMe Advent of Cyber 2022. Forensic McBlue to the rescue. Alright, so in this video we're gonna be doing malware analysis, as the title of the video says. The malicious document attached to the phishing email was confirmed to have been executed. Aside from the fact that rogue connections were observed, we know a little about what it does. So remember, early on we investigated a phishing email with a malicious document inside. So now our in-house expert, Forensic McBlue, I guess it's this guy right here, I think, confirmed that the malicious document spawned another suspicious binary. Pivoting from that, he dumped it from the memory for this task to be further analyzed via malware analysis. So what are our learning objectives? We want to learn the fundamentals of analyzing malware samples without relying on automated sandbox scanners. So that's good, so we're doing it by hand. And we want to learn and understand typical malware behavior and its importance in the incident investigation pipeline. So, first of all, they have a long note about what should be done or what are the key malware behaviors and what you should do before analyzing malware. So, since malware is software created to harm a computer or an entire network, um, you need to take caution when also when analyzing it, because they generally have goals like infiltrating the network, breaching sensitive data, or disrupting operational services. So they have multiple ways of doing that. One is the um, network connections. They um, tend to establish connections to an external or internal connection. And they then allow remote access in order to download, for instance, payloads. You could also modify registry keys to allow all binaries to be executed when the logger, uh, user logs in or when the machine is booting up. And you can also do file manipulation to, for instance, create new files needed for the successful execution. So it's always good to take care when handling malware. You should always assume that the malware will infect the device, so it's not always the correct idea to just start it up and execute it from the beginning on. Um, you should also only run your malware inside of a controlled environment to prevent compromise of unwanted assets. And it's also recommended to have a sandbox to allow for very free execution of those samples. So the sandbox is a controlled test environment that mimics a legitimate end user working environment and it gives analysts a safe environment to execute malware samples. So for this task, you may start the attached flare, flare VM sorry, instance by clicking on the Start Machine button. I've already done that in the background, so this is already running. If the VM is not visible, how can we do that? You may use the following credentials for alternative access via RDP. Okay, no, we're just using the browser. So now we're going to start with static and dynamic analysis. analysis. The static analysis is a way of analyzing the malware sample without executing the code. So we're looking at the binary, look at the readable information. So we look at the binary and the readable information, such as the properties, the program flow and strings. This is the same as we've done earlier on. And then we have dynamic analysis. Uh, which focuses on understanding how the malware is actually behaving when executed. So we'll see that the malware in action and its exact behavior and maybe we can learn a few things from that. So before popping the malware sample in desktop malware sample directory, let's conduct a status static analysis. So for that we use detect it easy. So sample malware, I guess. Yes mystery gift. Let's right click it and say detect it easy. Is it somewhere? We can open it with Fodara. No, there it is. Detect it easy. The 
this might take some time to start up. Okay, we started it up. So first of all, the first things they want to do is do strings on it. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. Okay, there's a lot of gibberish inside. Key not found. God, there's a lot of text. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, everything but A, B, C is inside of that string right here. So is there, oh, there was something, overflow, domain. Okay, is there anything they want us to answer on that one already? Let's look down to the questionnaire at the beginning. So what is the architecture of the malware sample? Is it 32-bit or 64-bit? We find that out from Detected Easy. E64. So that would then mean that it is 64-bit, right? Perfect. Um, so what is the packer used in a malware sample? Lower case. The packer. We find that somewhere here already. Indianness, the mode, the packer, UPX, UPX. What is the compiler used to build the malware sample? That is, we know the linker is unknown console 64, but that doesn't help us right now. Maybe this NRV behind the packer is actually a compiler and RV. No. So we need to find out the compiler. How can we find out the compiler? Is that something detected easy binary is packed by UPX? And realize the panel. So now let's unpack it. So How do we unpack it? We open up a no. This is this is the wrong thing. We don't want the process monitor. We want a PowerShell actually probably. No, we want the Windows inside of here. Power, come on. Can I not search here? Power. Windows PowerShell. So where are we actually located at the moment? If this would actually start, that would be grand. No. Okay. There we go. There. Uh, we go on to the desktop. We go into well, for example, and we say UPX, what was it, D, tag D, mystery gift, there we go, ultimate packer, all size unpacked one file. Okay, so we have unpacked it. Does this now help us in a way? So you may observe Kappa Kappa this is Kappa in order to analyze now our mystery gift and see what are the results from that. So we're loading it in, we're analyzing the program. This might not take some time. In the meantime, we can look at what Kappa actually is. So Kappa detects the capabilities of the executed file, uh, made before installation of the service, invocating network, connections, registry modifications, um, whatsoever. So to start playing with Kappa, you need to first go here. This was what we did, we went here. 
we used UPX to unpack it. And now we use Kappa in order to investigate it. With prior limited knowledge about the malware sample, let's investigate more about doing a dynamic analysis. Okay, so there we go. It's not easily readable because the background. We have the hashes of it. We have defense evasion of behavior files, persistence, anti-behavioral analysis. God, this is actually this, this is really not easily readable. I'm curious whether I can actually change the background color. Color. Um, screen background. That to white. But then the text won't be readable. Black. Black might work. Or just take some. Yeah, some light gray. This could work, right? Oh no, 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 no. Oh god, this is even worse. Um. Yeah, default. Layout. Colors. Go back to that one. Come on. Go back to the default. Oh, no, 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 no. This was not part of the plan. Take that blue back. Okay. So we have defense evasion. We have anti-behavioral analysis. Capabilities. Check for software breakpoints. Compiled with NIM. So we see here our compiler is NIM. So that is the next answer, I guess, to the next question. NIM was actually the compiled. How many Mitra attack techniques have been discovered? Mitra attack, we have one, two, three, four, five? No, then it's just a four from... I'm sorry? Attack tactics. We have defense evasion, we have discovery, we have execution, we have persistence. This is four, and we have five of them in here. That is now interesting. So what is the hint behind that? Check out attack tactic and technique table. Yes. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They count each of them as one. No? Eight then. Huh? I'm now confused. We have one, two, three, four, five tactics inside of here. But five was not correct. Two. Two Mitra attack tactics. Okay, I'm not sure how they got to that. Apparently some of them are not Mitra attack tactics. I guess. But that's... I'm not really sure about that one. I'm sorry I had to guess that one. What is the registry key abused by the malware? Check for software breakpoints. Contain. Is there anything else we can read from that right here? I guess not. So. We will definitely now need to look at the second part. Yes. So now we need to analyze it using the process monitor. So we're doing the dynamic analyzing right now. So we cannot execute the binary after double clicking it as this file is not exe. So first we need to prepare the tools we need for the analysis. So we use Progmon, the process monitor. So once open up, you will be prompted with the 
filter. So let's start Procmon. Let's set the condition to mysterygift.exe. That is correct. And say OK. As you did not add the item you were adding, you did not wait. cancel. Add. Okay. Good. So now we have added this one. And we can now rename our mystery gift. So we're going to move mystery gift to mystery gift dot whoops dot exe. And now it's time to do the cool part where we now pop up the malware. We go there, double click it, and then we use Progmon in order to analyze it. So yeah, let's start the malware. Move it to one side here. And let's go to the Progmon and see if anything actually will happen here. I'm curious about that. So we can enable the filters, enable and disable filters here. But as long as the malware is not doing anything, there is, I guess, nothing we have to check. Oh, so in the meantime, I just figured out what was the problem with the answer to the Mitra attack thing. It was just attributed to the discovery tactic, and of course there were just two things inside of the discovery. So I just didn't read the question correctly. Oh. Oh. The, not the architecture, it's the process name. Add that one in. Wait. Wait. So, add it, wait, and OK. We don't have it. Wait, oh no, oh no. Close that one up. Yes. And now we're getting stuff. There we go. So it was just a configuration problem. Okay, so what was the next question? Inside of here. Um, we want to see the rack. Registry, what do you want now? What is the registry key abused by the machine? So let's just take all the regs. Ugh. Registry key, reg, reg key, reg key. Reg binary. Salt success. Okay. User settings. That the key, open key. Look at the properties of this event. Is that the registry key that is being used? Or how do I see the key being used? Might be actually the key. Let's see. Let's copy that and paste it in here and submit it. No. So this is not our registry key I've used. I thought that maybe this was it. But which way do we see it? Do this click show register activity, exclude operation recurry key, rec key create. So close, exclude. Exclude them. Exclude them. 
Drag key create. There we go. So then that is the registry key. Right? No? We create parameters. Is there any other? Set value. No. I'm still going to take a look through that. Let's see. Ah, uh, we, we filter out every single thing of those. And we should see fewer results, like similar to that. Correct, yeah, rec key create and set value. The key is related to the persistence technique called registry key modification. Uh, modification. Let's see if it's not parameters. There is a second registry key here. So let's open that one up. Maybe it's actually the wrong one and not the parameters. That could actually be a case. Yes. Okay, so what is the value written on the registry key based on the previous question? Ah, uh, process stack. No, okay. Um, include that one. And we want to... How do we now filter that correctly? Because this is... Ah! Okay. So we want to... Oh, here in the filter. Get rid of all of these. Operations again. Registry key closed. Disposition opening key. Rec open key. Is there another op um, operation that I'm missing here? No. How do I see that now? The value written on the registry. How do you see that? It's rec set value. Rec. Uh, operation was it right? Is reg set value at that one and okay? No, okay. Then probably let's get rid of this path now. We're setting two values. Run default. Ah, there we go. So this is now default. The path is different. So that is the data. Submit. What are the names of two files created by the malware under C users administrator directory? Okay, so now we need to go and to see users administrator directory. When were they created? Huh. Test.exe and to user dot any. That could be it. Anti user dot any and test dot exe. Test dot exe. 
Event user dot ini. No. Event user dot that. Ay ay ay. What else do we have in there? Where is it actually? In administrator directory. What are the names of the two files created there? We actually see that maybe somewhere here. What's that? Back. No wishes. Dot bat. Administrator desktop. Wishes. Dot batch file. Okay. So on desktop something. No. Or anything else? Or could it be pictures? No. Documents. Hitler two. User administrator. C user administrator. So maybe we don't find them right here, but in the logs. Huh. That could be a good case right now. So, how would you see that? Go to filter, get rid of those things, and start it back up again. So, get rid of those. We just need the Pokemon. Do it faster. Perfect. Okay. See system system. You filter it by path. No. System system system. Oh god, there's this is too much. Uh, exclude them. That would be a lot less than. Okay, this takes a long time. Wait, no, didn't we just, um, we need to enable that one, apply, okay, there we go, then it's not that much, malware sample Mr. yif.exe, we know these already, administrator app, data local temp, test, jpeg, and wishes.bat, there we go. So we have test dot jpeg wishes dot bad. What are the two domains wherein malware has initiated a network connection? Okay, so I guess the next thing is are we gonna show the network activity? Best festival company dot thm and virus dot com. Best company best what was it best festival company festival company dot th m and virus total dot com going back to the strings inside the malware sample what is the complete url used to download the files hosted oh so so we need to go back to strings of the malware sample can we still an analyze it oh please that could be easy come on let's go to strings and filter No. Three dot com. Maybe somewhere. No. 
Oh, this is... This is regular expressions, probably. So this will not help us. So we analyze the strings. Or anything we see in the URLs. Oh, no, no, this was something else. UTF. We go back to make it easy. Strings. Maybe exit. Maybe the problem now is that it's an ex exe file and not a yes, I want to rename it. And not again the binary file from beforehand. Let's see now the strings. HTT A. I thought that chosen to minus what no. So is there any other way we can do that in direct it easy? With the strings. We have signatures. No. So my guess now would be maybe it's mystery gift dot exe. Does this fit in here? Miss no. No, it does not fit in here. So we go to strings. Is there anything exe related inside? Best no. I'm not sure whether there should be something. Maybe let's see, is there a bar uh, no? Search. So Uh, any URL mystery gift nim c what is that but this is nothing now what is the hint behind that use direct it easy again and use the strings functionality to see the complete URL used by the first Domain. You may also filter the strings to display the desired output. To be see, used for the first domain. Yeah, fe best festival company thm. But if I close it, I go to strings, and let's look for best. Festival company thm. No, company thm. Uh, research. No. can save that, it doesn't help us. I guess. Oh. That is pretty, pretty interesting again. I'm not sure why it sh didn't work. My guess would be that it should work like this. You probably go into it and Search for the strings, but somehow they don't appear here. Do we need to... Unpack? 
unpack it. Maybe we need to unpack it first. That is an idea. So we do the same thing we did beforehand. So let's close that, close that one down. Um, desktop and how was it called? UPX, UPX, tag, D. Malware sample, UPX, check D, mystery gift. Okay. Then let's go back to this window here. Come on. Everything crashes again. It's not what I like. So we say here, let's close the detected exactly. Close the window. And detect it easy. Let's try that again. Let's go. Strings. Does look any different? Best. Oh, yes. So we had to unpack it first. And I missed that step because I restarted the machine at the beginning because I thought I made a mistake. Okay, so we found the bestfestival.com.thm 5icon.ico, which was accessed by the malware. We did some cool malware analysis today. We accessed data, we went through the malware analysis at the beginning, looked at different attack strategies, analyzed what the malware is doing, which websites or which URLs it connected to and what it did download. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. You can see already down below the spoiler for next day, day 13 is packet analysis, simply having a wonderful pickup time. So I think we're going to be using pickup tomorrow in order to analyze some dumps. But this has been it for day 12 of the Advent of Cyber 2022. Make sure to like the video and subscribe and turn on the notification bell in order to be notified as soon as the next video is being released. Other than that, my name is Avokari. Have fun hacking your way through the advent of Cyber 2022. Take care.